So I want to talk about a ASDF, um, which is a version manager. And I will start with the ballad of ASDF, which I did not write, but I thought was pretty, pretty cute. So I will read it to you. Once upon a time, there was a programming language. There were many versions of it. So people wrote a version manager for it to switch between versions for projects, different, old, and new. Then there came more programming language languages, so there came more version managers and many commands for them. I installed a lot of them. I learned a lot of commands. Then I said, just one more version manager, which I will write instead. So there came another version manager, ASDF version manager. So I was trying to communicate like, why I like this tool and this said it way better than I could. So I will start with that and then we'll get into, into some of my use cases. Um, so yeah, what, what is it? Um, it's a tool which manages multiple versions of other tools and it was started by Akash Menor in 2014 and it's MIT licensed. Um, one thing to note is that it does require a Unix like shell. So if you try to use it in you know, the, the DOS command prompt, I don't think it would work. Never tried it. I suspect it won't work. But um, with the Linux subsystem for Windows these days being so integrated, I, I imagine you could use it there. I just don't have that system set up to, to have tested it out. Um, so let's talk about an example use. <clears throat> so I have developed a Ruby gem that, of course, has a Ruby dependency, but also has a Node.js dependency. So in my project, I have a file called .tool versions in the root directory of the project, and it contains these two lines. It just says what node version I should be using and what Ruby version I should be using. So I have a live demo of this. So this is the, the name of the Ruby gem. It it's, uh, allows people to uh, get holiday information across the world. Um, but if I cut out the tool version file, You'll see what it looks like. So if I say node-v, it matches. If I say ruby-v, it matches. Okay. Now, if I go to my home directory and I do the same thing, it, uh, you see different versions. There you go. So um, any place I cd into, it, when I type these commands, it just goes up recursively in the hierarchy and, and looks for a tool version file, and it just uses whatever version is specified there. So that's kind of how it works. So for me, it's really nice. Um, I maintain a number of different gems and applications, and they can vary in what versions of tools they're using. Um, I have a project that has a Java and a Ruby dependency, and I manage it the exact same way. So um, personally, I started using uh, like language version managers back maybe 10 years ago with RVM for Ruby. And um, one of the members of this group actually told me about that tool. So I used that for a while, then I switched to another Ruby version manager called RBN, and then I started using a node version manager called NVM, and then it was like, wait a second, why do I, it's kind of annoying, I mean, it was nice to have the tools, but then one of my friends said, why don't you use ASDF? And I was like, wait, what are you talking about? And he said, yeah, it, it works for everything. So I said, oh, okay, great. So I've been using it for about a year, it's been working, working well for me. Um, so yeah, let's kind of jump in to how some of the commands work. Um, if there's any questions, just feel free to shout that out. Um, so the installation is pretty simple. You end up uh, cloning the ASDF Git repo, and you add some initialization to your shell. Um, it also supports the Z shell and Fish. So this is the Bash example, but it has support for all that stuff. Um, the way it works is each tool is managed by a plugin, right? So I have a Ruby plugin, a JavaScript plugin, a Java plugin, and a couple of others. So um, there is a list of, uh, like an official list of plugins maintained on the ASDF website. Uh, I believe there's 180 of them. So if you look at this, you'll notice that it's not all just languages. There's actually like Postgres and MySQL are here in addition to a bunch of other things. Um, I have mostly just used it for languages, although like in retrospect, it, there are some cases where maybe I'm doing a database upgrade and I want the old version and the new version side by side. Um, you know, for me, like Homebrew tends to have like 
major versions of MySQL, but it might not always have every little version of it. So it's kind of something I'll, I'll consider in the future, but my main use case is for languages. Um, okay, so the way you install these plugins is you say ASDF plugin add and then the name of the plugin, and you can list your installed plugins like this. So if I go back here, um, so yeah, the, you can see all the, <clears throat> all the plugins I have installed. Okay, um, and then once you get the plugin set up, it's just a matter of managing the versions of whatever tool you have a plugin for. So if you want to see like what what Ruby versions I have installed, I would run this. So there you go. Um, if you want to see all possible Ruby versions, you just say all to the you add the all word to this, and there's a ton of them. Um, if you count them, there's 462 versions of Ruby you could install. Um, so if you want to install a specific Ruby, you would say AST, you can install Ruby, and then whatever version you want. Um, the other thing you can do is if you want to say like, okay, I know this project is going to use Ruby 2.7.0, you can say AST of local Ruby and the version, and then that automatically adds that to your tool versions file. And then you would usually check in your tool versions file under version control. Um, the nice thing about this, again, is, you know, if I want to install a Node version, all I have to do is say, ASD, you have installed Node.js in whatever version. It's not like I have to remember, like, RVM versus NVM or, you know, the little intricacies of commands across all the tools. All right, so to get updates, um, to update ASDF itself, you just say ASDF update. And then to update a specific plugin, you would say ASDF plugin update and then give the plugin name. Or you can just update all your plugins at once. I'll actually do that real quick just to get a sense of the inner workings a little bit more. Um, so as you can see, everything is just a Git repo. Um, it's just pulling Git repos that I have checked out. The plugins are managed by Git repo. ASDF itself is managed with a Git repo. So under the hood, as I said, everything's a Git repo. Um, the way it works is it adds two directories to your path. So it adds AS, .asdf shims and .asdf bin are prepended to your path. And um, let's take a look at a shim and you'll get a sense of how it works. So if I go to my shims directory, well, before I do that, let's, let's um, I'll go back to my project. So if I say type, this is in bash, type dash a Ruby, you can see that it finds two Ruby, right? It finds the, the shim that ASDF manages and it also finds the system Ruby. Um, so if we go into the shims directory, actually, you know what, we'll just, yeah, we'll go in there. Uh, so I have a bunch of tools, right? Um, a lot of these, in my case, are just uh, commands that are packaged with specific gems. So it links it up here. Uh, but if we take a look at, let's take, uh, let's take a look at um, the Ruby shim. So yeah, it has a bunch of metadata and then all it's really doing is just execing uh, the ASDF script and then it's passing in Ruby in a version. So if you look at these shims, they're all basically just, you know, deferring to this ASDF script. Um, yeah, the other thing that's nice about it is if you are migrating from an existing version manager tool, it does support, a lot of the plugins support the old like dot files. So in my case, dot Ruby version is what RVM and RBN used. So I have that in a lot of my projects and ASDF knows that and just picks it up. So it's been nice as I've transitioned to it. Okay, so let's talk about security real quick. Um, so it really comes down to, do you trust the Git repos? Um, in, in my opinion, security is kind of lacking in a lot of these version manager tools. Um, RBN and NVM in particular have offer the same level of security as ASDF. From what I've looked at, RVM actually appears to have the best security. I have a link to like their security page. Um, at least they publish a GPG key and they sign something. I think they at least install like the RVM 
the packages themselves. I don't know if they sign the Ruby versions that you would actually get. I haven't gone that far to verify that, but at least they're they're doing something. Um, so so be aware of that. Um, tr a traditional package manager uh, will will probably do a better job with that. But the other thing you run into with traditional package manager is that they might offer you one or two versions of a language and not like 400 versions. So, you know, it's like, it's a trade-off. Okay, um, so things I've learned as I've worked with this tool. So everything is installed from source. So you just plan on waiting for some builds as, as it compiles stuff. And um, one of the things I ran into when I was building Ruby 256, which is not the latest version of the 25 series, I actually had to um, set an environment variable and, and tell it where my OpenSSL directory was. When I installed 257, right, the minor version, the latest minor version, um, it worked just fine and 270 worked just fine. So I noticed in the output when I did this, they actually like downloaded OpenSSL somewhere. So like they knew about that issue and the plugin manager seems to have addressed it for those new versions, but you know, you'll run into some things like that. Um, again, this is not like a traditional uh, homebrew or or apt or anything like that. It's not going to download binaries. It's going to compile everything from source. Um, yeah, that's it. And if you want to learn more, there's a bunch of documentation at asdfvm.com. Can you install your own versions? Or do you have to go through their source? Um, I've always gone through their source. If I was to like install, you know, something really unique myself, I would probably just download the source and compile it and set my paths up manually, like I did in the olden days. Okay. <laughs> We're so spoiled nowadays. Like it wasn't <laughs> hard, like twenty years ago, to say you know prefix on the make command, but you know. It's yeah. pretty convenient these days because it sets up all the pathing for you, right? That is pretty slick. I've never even, I've never seen any of those other tools, let alone this one. Yeah, it's, it's pretty handy. It's like a nice thing to have in your toolbox, especially if you're a polyglot um, or even, if, you know, everyone's a polyglot these days. We all probably use JavaScript and something else. So I, I think it's, I would recommend it for everyone. This is kind of neat because I've run into, um, you know, your path gets huge because you got RVM, NVM, blah, 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 everything. So this is kind of <laughs> puts it all in one place at least. So um, <clears throat> one other thing is in Python, you got all these, um, like the virtual environments and that kind of thing. Does it do anything with that or it's just basically, I mean, does, I assume it installs Python. It does. Um the Python plugin, I believe, mentioned that. But with that said, I, I'm fairly new to Python myself. I don't quite understand the virtual environments. And there's, a, you know, again, there's about 50 script sets that deal with Python virtual environments. And so if this had a single, you know, if this had one, then it might be, oh, well, maybe that's something we can uh, use. Yeah, let's take a quick look because I'm kind of curious. Success. And I don't see anything mentioned virtual environments here, but yeah, I, I don't know enough about virtual environments, unfortunately, to answer your question really well. Yeah, and then I'm not real good at it either. So um, I, I do know it's a pain, but you know, <laughs> if this had some help, maybe it would be one less tool I got to deal with. Right. Yeah. My understanding, my limited understanding of virtual environments in Python is it's kind of like um, RVM. The Ruby version manager used to have this concept of gem sets. Oh, right. Um, you know, so, and then Ruby kind of got away with that because Bundler, if you if you prefix all your Ruby scripts with Bundle exec, it looks at your gem file and your gem file.lock and says, you know, I don't care what you have installed in your gem directory. I'm just going to make sure you use these versions. Um, but yeah, the, I'm not really sure how it works. I've seen any other questions about ASDF? <laughs> How actively is it maintained? Uh, it looks pretty active, and I was I was really surprised at when I when I first thought about giving this talk how big the the plugin list was. Okay. See, there's no PowerShell. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's very uh, Unix age. Uh, nobody. <clears throat> <even. laughs> Almost nobody. <laughs> well, I mean, what I are, are the? Uh, I use the Windows. Don't plug in through it and then. They can be written in anything. I actually looked at the docs for that, how to write them. And you just need to implement um, commands that conform to a specific interface. So I, I think they're probably written in whatever language the login <laughs> provides for the most part. Now, I, use, I use the Windows subsystem for Linux for my, for my work, and I would expect this would work just fine there, just looking at it. Yeah, I, I would too. I would just give it another recommendation because I had to set up a MacBook today that never had a uh, node install. And so I was able to install ASDF and then get node. And just to be clear, the first thing you do is you install ASDF, then you install, yeah. then you need to install the plugin for the language you're interested in. And then you can install whatever version of that language you want. Yeah, and I I still use a traditional, more traditional package manager. Like I still use Homebrew on my Mac. I, I don't think I don't see this as a replacement for that. Um, you know, if I want to install like the GNU version of Find, like yeah, I'm probably gonna just get that from Homebrew. It, it's faster, and um, it's not gonna compile anything. It's gonna download binaries for me, and that sort of thing. I really mostly use this for the languages. So let me, um, when you, you, um, you said there's a uh, file like in your current directory that can be, that defines what versions of what tools you need to operate in that directory. So if I yep. go to this directory and run node, it gives me the version I've specified in that file as opposed to like the global default. That's correct, yep. That's pretty slick. Oh, and the other reason to use these sorts of tools, like if you don't use ASDF, like, it's nice to use a language version manager because if you're doing a lot of development, there might be like, for example, if you're doing Ruby development, there's probably a Ruby interpreter installed on your operating system. And it might be a version that works for your project, but do you really want to be polluting your system level Ruby with all your gems and whatever you're going to do, right? I'd rather just keep the operating system version of language pure so that it can do whatever it needs with it. And then I can do whatever I want with, um, my own version of the interpreter. And any, uh, any idea what it would take to uh, make your own plugin for your for uh, some esoteric language? It doesn't look too bad. I think could benefit like from um, a few version minutes. control of, of the interpreter. Uh, I didn't hear the last part. Sorry. So that you get, you could. How easy would it be to build your own plugin to handle an some esoteric language that would benefit by having uh, a, a management system that keeps track of which version of the interpreter you're running with, or which which version of the core language you're running with. Yeah, it doesn't look too bad. It, it looks like you you create a Git repo, implement a few commands that are named as you know, you would think a certain uh, convention, and uh, then you you're up and running. Just looking at the Python plugin, it's like a hundred lines across a few files. Tops. Yeah, that doesn't surprise me. Oh, cool. 